I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual. 起立，面向佛堂，参加先鞠躬，一鞠躬，再鞠躬，三鞠躬，参加各位的传师鞠躬，开班一鞠躬，请坐下。And last time, I talked about the translation of the of the characters, and the question came up because next Sunday,、uh, Master William will be visiting Indiana, and I'm hoping that people who are interested in the Dow will be visiting Bill and you know meeting、uh, Master William in person. Here at this temple, I also want to encourage everyone to、um, uh, find some opportunity to speak with these masters. Uh, introduce yourself, or you know, let me know. I'll I'll introduce you and、uh, maybe have a conversation with them. Now, I want to clarify.、Uh, previously, I talked about how people tended to assume that someone with the master of title is all wise, all knowing. You know, like Ben Kenobi in Star Wars. Uh, so in reality, you quickly discover that these masters are just like are human beings, just like everyone else. There are some of them who are truly admirable individuals, and there are also quite a few of them who are students of the Tao, just like you and me. So it would be it would be best not to assume too much in them prior to to you getting to know them, and not certainly don't assume that everything they say is infallible. Uh, that must be correct, etc.、Uh, remember, they may just be learning like you and me. So I wanted to create a slide to get into that in greater detail. The idea is to set the appropriate expectation.、Uh, I am respectful of all the masters、uh, because because they have the authority to conduct Iguandao rituals. So that I cannot dispute whatsoever. They have that what they call a, a divine mission. And here's the other part.、Um, one thing they have in common: the the Enchanshi, the ordained masters. There's no formal, there's no seminary of the Tao, there's no formal curriculum that they have to go through. They don't earn a degree in in divinity studies, etc. So you can't count on them、uh, having a similar level of background as far as education. However, what you can count on is that they all know the primary text from the Taoist tradition, from the Buddhist tradition, and Confucian classics, and they all know it in the original Chinese. That's that's a certainty, and they have access to to books,、uh, to commentaries about them, about those classics. So think about the fact that the faulty translations that we have today in the West. Uh, already is powerful enough to cause many people to say, you know, I read this book, this translation of the Tao Te Ching, and it changed my life. So, I totally believe that it has the power to do that. Even though at the same time I look at that translation and to myself I'm thinking that's full of mistakes, you know.、Um, but I can't, I can't contest the fact that someone's life has changed as a result of reading that book. And I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is that, well, that book is、uh, like reduced strength, half strength, and if it's powerful enough to change your life, imagine what a completely accurate book can do. So these people have access to the most accurate version in the original language, which is why I would, I'm very comfortable recommending all of these ordained masters、uh, as people based on the wisdom they have acquired. From studies of the original text to be a very good spiritual advisor for you. So <clears throat> I can rely upon them to provide valuable advice for spiritual or secular problems.、Uh, they they would certainly be able to draw from the ancient teachings to provide you insights that you may not anticipate. Now I do have a couple of. Of, of gachas down here, just cautionary notes. So it depends on the the person. So、um, in our online group, I know that we have an ordained master who's、uh, who basically grew up、uh, in the United States and therefore 
he will be the exception to number one. Uh, he grew up, he knows the culture. He, he's, uh, he can be very much in tune with uh, life in North America, just like you or I. So pop, pop culture references, he would understand completely. But if you were to talk to someone who maybe came over, who uh, immigrated into the United States as an adult, well, that person did not grow up here, did not partake in the culture here, and there will be many things that they don't know, and sometimes it's unexpected. Uh, I will uh, use Master William as an example. So one time, I was talking to another uh, Chinese-style cultivator uh, who also grew up in the United States. His name is Mike, and so jokingly, and he's, he's always so dapper. He's always very well put together, so I always called him GQ Mike. I was like, hey, GQ Mike, how's it going? So Master William is like, why do you call him GQ Mike? And, and I said, uh, gentleman's quarterly. And he's, he's still completely lost. And then I have to backtrack and realize that, well, he probably has no idea. So I backtracked and said, gentleman's quarterly is a men's magazine featuring fashionable male models with the latest uh, attire. And therefore, when I want to compliment a guy as being really dapper and well put together, I say, hey, you're looking really GQ, you know, and then, okay, then finally, he, he, he got it. So, they may not know that much about Western culture, philosophies, and religions. Um, that's kind of where I come in. If you want to talk about, uh, you know, the Bible in detail, if you want to talk about biblical atrocities, I can engage you in a conversation about that. If you want to talk about Western philosophies, uh, science, quantum mechanics, uh, high energy physics, particle physics, etc., cetera, uh, I'm, I'm game. We can talk about that. I can, I can tell you about the stuff that I've been reading uh, recently and what I find interesting, some of the thoughts that I can share with you. But if you were to approach these people from an Eastern background, they may not really know anything beyond um, Big Bang, you know, 14 some billions of years ago, universe was created, etc. Uh, you know, they probably won't be able to get into all the other stuff. They may not have ever read Christopher Hitchens. They may not be able to talk about the difference between being agnostic to being whatever, uh, etc. So all of those other things, that's where I can sort of volunteer myself to step in and have a discussion with you. Uh, but for, with them, uh, probably not, not a safe bet. Now, some of them I know still operated from a form-oriented perspective rather than the formless Tao. So what I mean by that is that I personally know of some ordained masters who are really big on uh, uh, hell as a place of punishment and that you should cultivate the, the Tao or you get sent to hell. So, uh, you know, at that when I talk to ordained masters like that, I would just respectfully smile uh, and not try to engage them in a debate, uh, not try to change their minds, uh, and you know, not try to uh, get into a disagreement with them. You know, no, you're wrong, stuff like that. That just doesn't really help anyone. I just respect that they ha they have their perspectives. Everybody is different. Everybody has. I can learn from anyone, so uh, including them. So I just want you to be aware that if you want to talk about the Tao as a philosophy as opposed to a purely religious pursuit, you will have to initiate a conversation with them mentally prepared. So, and so I hope this will help. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do the meeting and the ritual, everybody. Shiri. 面向佛堂持家三鞠躬一鞠躬再鞠躬三鞠躬持家各国四鞠躬结班一鞠躬 OK everybody, we are done.